Oh, hey guys. Let's learn about the dust poof and how the forces of nature act upon it. So I've got this design that is slightly cleaned up from the previous tutorials where I was designing these dust poofs. And I'm going to break down some things about how I created this animation. So if we take a look at this, I've already got it animated. Now, the purpose of this tutorial is not to talk about how I animated it but rather to talk about what I was thinking about when I animated it. So you guys can kind of get an idea for some of the air currents and forces that are interacting with each other and how I timed out the shapes and what I was thinking throughout the process. So this is much less of a technical training tutorial and much more of a fundamental principles of physics and how that relates to effects. So let's get going into this. So we've got these frames. I'll just scrub through them very gradually for you guys. You can see that it starts moving very quickly at the very beginning and then it dissipates gradually towards the end. It's quick, kind of holds there for a while and then dissipates. One way to think about this is if we can look at the general outline of the effect. So here I've got three different colors. We've got the green dome up at the top and we've got the orange on the left and the yellow on the right. And you can see them marked here with different layers. So I can solo them out and we can see just the green layer as it comes up like that. And then a cool thing that we can do with edit multiple frames turned on, I can essentially show you guys every one of the frames. Or I can switch it over to show multiple frames if I wanted to fade. And eh, that looks kind of funny. I'll do edit so that you can see the full brightness of the entire thing. So we can see from this that the timing of the leading edge moves pretty quickly at first and then slows down very rapidly until so these lines up here are almost indistinguishable, right? If we zoom in closer, we turn on outline mode, we can see the differentiation between these guys. I mean, they get really, really, really subtle. Now, in between these can be a huge pain in the butt. And you'll notice that they're not perfectly straight, but they're pretty close. And the amount of wobble that's in there is not very easy to pick up on. If I look at the orange layer over here, I can see that it's doing its own thing. I'll turn on outline mode on that so that it, we can zoom in and see the detail. By the way, when I'm doing the outline mode thing, I'm just switching between the actual line width of these, which is two pixels wide and when you turn on outline mode it just switches it to uh, 0.1 pixels wide so it's just a lot thinner and more clear to see what's going on so again we see that there's some variation in how much these are apart from each other but by doing keyframes and then in-betweens of those keyframes and then in-betweens of those um, you can eliminate the wobble by properly in between and I, I taught you guys how to in-between in previous tutorials so I'd refer you back to that for reference. So yeah, again, basically it's going pretty fast, but we can see that the gap sizes between this and this are different um, on the orange ones. The orange one seems to be going faster a little bit longer, right? Like it's going fast here, like this is a really big gap. That's still a pretty big gap. And then these are still big. So it's got one, two, three, four decent sized gaps whereas the green one only has two decent sized gaps over here. So that tells me that this orange one is gonna be traveling more quickly for just a little bit longer. So it's the green one's gonna come up and then the orange one's gonna like chase up behind it. And then the yellow one over here is kind of just going fast throughout, right? Like it's got a really big gap here and then all of these gaps are decent sized and then only at the very end does it slow down. So if I test this out, I can see just what I was describing. The green one, you know, basically starts slowing down first. And then the orange one kind of goes a little bit longer. And then the yellow one really is traveling throughout almost the entire animation, with just a little hold at the end. So already in just the silhouette of this dust poof, I have created variety and variation. But overall, the whole thing kind of moves up. Uh, one thing I left out was the bottom tip. 
um, you can see that the bottom tip actually accelerates towards the end, whereas the top is slowing down. That's a fun way of adding that variety where you get you know, the top to move quick at first and slow at the end with the trail elongating behind and then the trail then whips up and it, it, like it's almost like a stretchy um, rubber band, I forgot the word, like a rubber band, you stretch it out and then you let it fly and then the, the tip comes in really quick. So that's kind of what's happening there at the end. And we can see that down here where it's going slow at first and then these are more spaced out so it's traveling just a little faster at the end. All right, well it won't do to just have um, a boring smoke shape. We have to have negative shapes that come in and eat it out, eat out of it. And I'll start with my cyan shape over here. And we can see how it's coming in and curving from the side and then expanding upward. And if I look at that guy, the same way we were before, we can start to see some of these patterns that are going on. And I like to think of these patterns as naturally occurring, occurring events. So this here kind of looks like uh, erosion, like you would see in like Zion's National Park, you know, where there's the stone wall and the water has eroded o over the years. Um, it also kind of looks like a height map that you would see when you're looking at like a mountain range or something, you know. It's got these hills going on. And yeah, so basically the idea is if, if you're doing it right with effects, um, your in-betweens can have a tendency to remind you of, of other things that you can find out in nature. So let's go ahead and zoom on in on this guy and we'll learn a few things about it. So the first frame is this guy down here. You can see it mostly because of the, the upper leading edge. He goes really, really far traveling up to this leading edge and then to this one, that one, and that one, and so on, where you can see it's traveling pretty quickly in the middle of it and it's slowing way down to go slow at the end. Same with the top edge, it's traveling pretty quickly and then expanding out. That's one thing about an air current is um, you want it to, as it travels, it, it's going to dissipate, it's going to want to expand. That's the natural way that air moves, right? When you um, let it out of a compressed space that jets it really quickly, it wants to flow out and reach outward. I've got an interesting little hook right here where it, for a while it looks like all these frames are right on top of each other but then they're finally breaking away out into this. So let's see how that's how that's looking. I can come over here and set in betweens like that and do this guy. There we go. Well it's not working like I'd hoped. Let's just do a few frames before and after. There we go. So it's coming out. You can start to see how that works. So it starts down here in small, and then it comes up, and it eats outward. And I can show it just one frame before and after to be even more precise. And so this is the, the general pattern that this guy is moving in. One last time. There we go. All right, so we got the cyan gust going there. Now for the blue one. So the blue one comes up, it holds still for a little bit, and then it goes really big at the very end. So it holds all those frames close together, and it expands right out. So, again, if I look at all the frames here, I can start to see, again, some of those naturally occurring patterns and flowing that we see, right? This almost feels like a a water ripple around um, a stone face or something like that. Notice also that some of these lines, they're not moving um, in the same direction and expanding in the same way every time. So like this guy here is on the leading left edge down at the bottom, but once we come up here we find him on the leading right edge, which tells me that up here he was expanding up into the right a little bit, while down here he was expanding out into the left. And that's kind of a nice way of um, approaching your line expansion is, you know, you don't always want to uniformly expand it radiating outward. If you do that, it'll just feel like a computer made it, right? Like, 
you know, you want to like hold some spots in place while other spots move and expand and and bulge on out there. So, yeah. So that's the blue one. That's the blue negative shape that's going to come up. And then we've got the red negative shape. And the red one is pretty straightforward. It just starts down here, moves quickly, holds very slowly in the middle of it, and then and then puffs up really quickly. And when we look at all three of these together, we can see that there's a lot of variety in the timing. So the red one, like I was saying, it holds towards the middle. Um, the cyan one, it kind of has a time in its middle where it kind of holds a bit, but then it goes quickly and then holds again towards the end. And then the blue one goes fast at first. It has a hold here in the middle where it slows down quite a bit and then it speeds up again too. So I know that there's gonna be a few frames where it's gonna poof out and um, these negative shapes are gonna kinda stay mostly still and then they're gonna continue. So if I look at all these together and I unguide my red, cyan, and blue layers, I can see how it's all working together here. And we've got all these Fun shapes coming on up and eating away at that main shape. I can look at it here. So, yeah, it's just what I was saying where, you know, at first they're kind of holding for a little bit, and then at the end they kind of like, you know, whisk away and expand out. It just adds that nice variety. All right, so. Another way of looking at this, before I move on to the final, we start looking at how it looks in the final form, is with positive shapes, indicating the negative shapes. So, we've got these guys growing in, and you can start to see what that um, white is going to look like in the middle there. But this is just another way to illustrate for you guys how to think about this. So, there it is. I can also come in here on outline mode and show you everything all together at once including the greens so the green is the um, outer edge and the reds coming on up and through there maybe I'll hit F4 to show it even more clearly so you can kind of see how all this is working together there's a lot going on that's why I broke it down one at a time, is because there's a lot of different forms and shapes all interacting with each other, but you'll notice that there's recurring patterns, you know, like the blue and the red kind of come up at this angle here, which the green also comes up at a similar angle, right? These shapes are all relating to each other because when, you know, a gust of air goes, it doesn't just go in a straight line, it affects the area around it as well, and so it's nice to have good flow throughout your shapes. And then I've got these other, this other flow of direction coming up on the left side. And there are just different variants of that, all working together to intersect and create that effect. Okay, so now we'll move on to showing everything together. So we've got this effect going on here. And you'll see the different shapes as they eat away at the positive shape. This is my favorite one to demonstrate because it just kind of looks cool, right? And the reason it looks cool is because it's the final version of everything coming together in one. And I was very methodical in thinking about how these forces are operating and how they want them to function. Notice that right here, I wasn't too um, meticulous about making sure that this didn't cross over the orange line. I went ahead and let that tip bleed out there. So if I show this one, we can see this is probably the best illustration of all of, of how these forces are operating and how they come together. Because you can see the negative shapes eating away. You can see where the positive shape was. It's just kind of a fun one to think about. So really, this is my hope with this tutorial, is that you guys walk away feeling like um, you understand a little bit more about how the forces of nature function and like how physics operates when it comes to a dust poof. I'm going to go ahead and show all four of them at once. We've got the final version over here with those shapes. You've got the 
outline version here, you've got the filled in version here, and then kind of the outline filled in combo over here. And you can see that, you know, there's a lot of thought that, thinking that can go into this effect. And don't be mistaken, like, I actually spent quite a few hours working on this, preparing for this tutorial. It's, it's not easy getting the motion smooth, let alone getting those different forces to interact with each other in an interesting way. I mean, when you look at this, like, there's even still room for improvement on it. Like, this uh, cyan shape here, you know, it kind of expands up. There's probably, you know, a more interesting way I could make it bob and weave to kind of eat away through that shape. Um, this isn't the only way you could have set it up, right? Like, you could have a force coming in from the side, and, like, maybe it would curve upward or something like that. You know, maybe there's, like, a random force that comes down from above and, like, does a little spiral. Um, I would encourage you guys to play around with all kinds of different interactions. Um, again, I'll reference the book Elemental Magic by Joseph Gilland. If you have not checked it out yet, I totally recommend it. I mean, it's a must read for any effects artist. In that book, he talks a lot about these kinds of forces and how nature operates on things like smoke and fire and water and all of that stuff. And, it's super helpful. It definitely got me going when I was first starting out in effects. I'll probably keep referencing it over and over again to make sure that you guys hear the message if you missed this video. Um, so yeah, that's how the forces of nature operate on a simple poof of dust. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you learned something.